My name is Bill Poplar, and I'm the Chief of Labor Relations for the California National Guard. My team and I specialize in making things work between management, employees, and the unions. Uh, you can see on this first slide our telephone number and our email distribution address. Um, and, and further, you can see where our public website is at, at the link shown. So this next block of instruction, which is probably 30 minutes or so, um, you can see the agenda that we have. What you need to take away from this session is, are you eligible to be a member of a union? Who is your union point of contact? And what are my rights as an employee? I'll give you a few seconds to look at this slide. Just right up front, you can see that there's some differences between the private sector and the public sector. We're all public sector employees. The common thing is that we do negotiate or bargain working conditions. Working conditions, just a few examples, are in the lower right part of your slide in that call out. The private sector unions uh, also negotiate wages, health benefits, retirement benefits. They have an option to strike or do a work slowdown. Um, those things are not negotiated by public sector unions in management. Uh, and in fact, it is against federal regulation for public sector employees to strike. How to determine if you are eligible to belong to a bargaining unit versus whether you're not eligible. And it's actually easier to define those who aren't eligible. And you can see on this slide, and I'll give you a second to read it, you can see on this slide that obviously uh, managers and supervisors are not eligible. Uh, confidential employees in Equal Employment Opportunity Specialist, the State um, Assault Response Coordinator, um, folks like chaplains, those are considered confidential employees. Personnelists are folks that you know do administrative related work. They're only excluded if they deal with adverse actions and disciplinary issues on a, on a constant and recurring basis. Otherwise they can belong to the union. Professional employees like the JAG or doctors obviously excluded. Um, we don't really get too much in this intelligence, counterintelligence, because it has to actually affect national security. Um, those that are involved in investigations and audits are excluded, and we do have some of those. So it's easier to describe who may not belong. Those that generally belong um, are considered blue collar workers or tradespeople. So how do you tell? In this next slide, uh, what we have is an SF-50. It's, it's a notification of personnel action. So for civilian employees, this is equivalent to a, an order, a written order in the military for like promotions or if you're transferring that type of thing. So this is a very important document. It's all online now. Um, you have access to it or you will have access to it through my biz and how you tell if you belong to a bargaining unit is on every SF-50 in block 37 it says bargaining unit status and in this case 5013 means that this employee belongs to LIUNA, the Laborers International Union of North America and LIUNA represents all army employees at least in California and if there is all eights in block 37, that means that you're not eligible to belong to the bargaining unit. In this case, um, I think this is a management related employee, that's what they do, and so they cannot belong to the bargaining unit. So if there's four numbers, anything other than four eights, you may belong to a bargaining unit, and I'll show you those codes here in a minute. If it's all eights, you may not belong to a bargaining unit, cannot be represented by the union. So that's the first main question is, where do 
I find or how do I tell if you're eligible for a bargaining unit? And that's in block 37 of every SF50 that, that you receive. Okay, ACT is Association of Civilian Technicians. They basically represent all but one of our wings in California. So we'll just run through them real quick. Local 105 right now does not have a, um, a, a steward or an officer. And so Norm Smith is actually the Western Region Management um, person for ACT. So he, he is the current go-to guy for Local 105, um, which is a 146 Air Wing, and their bus code would be NG for National Guard 5009. So if you see 5009 in Block 37, you belong to the Union, and Norm Smith's your point of contact. You can see his email address and his phone number on there. Uh, ACT 109 represents the 129th in Mountain View. Their bus code is 5014. Francis Schmidt or Fritz is the steward and the representative over there. He's a retired um, National Guard technician, but he still acts as the, the steward for the 129th. So you can see his email address and phone number. And then at the bottom, that's where our ACT contracts are located on our public website. So you can go ahead and, and review the contract that applies to you if you're a member of the Union and you work at the 146th or the 129th. Um, ACT 118 is a 144th down in Fresno, bus codes 5008. Dave Tama Michael is the point of contact or steward. ACT 121 is the 163rd down at March Air Reserve Base, bus code is 5015. Anthony Villafranca is the uh, steward there. Of course, the contract again at the um, the public website. The other representative of the Air National Guard is NAGE, National Association of Government Employees, local R12-120. They represent the 162nd Combat Communications Group, bus code 5011. Brett Carroll is the steward or the union president his contact information is on the screen and again a link to our public website where a copy of that union contract can be um, obtained. LIUNA, Laborers International Union of North America, represents all of the California Army National Guard eligible employees. Jeanette Velotten is the business manager. You can see her contact information and in the lower part of the page, the link to the public website where a copy of Leuna's contract may be reviewed or obtained. Now you know who your points of contact are for each of the unions, let's move into what your rights are as an employee. You should focus on the bold text on this slide. You have the right by federal law that's 5 U.S.C. 7102, to form, join, or assist any labor organization, which is a union, or to refrain from such activity without any fear of penalty or reprisal. You may act um, in, on behalf of a union in the capacity of a representative, so you can be a union steward or a union officer, and you may also engage in collective bargaining with respect to conditions of employment. Um, those are the working conditions that we talked about a little bit earlier. I'll give you a second to read the slide. In the meantime, just know that this paragraph is highly paraphrased and condensed. Um, if you want to review the actual verbiage, please do an internet search on 5 U.S.C. 7114 and you can read and understand all of the rights of the union. In a nutshell, I will say that a union is the exclusive representative for employees in that work element. They have the opportunity to represent or be represented in any formal discussion, any examination, 
in any negotiation that relates to that unit. It's a unique process. There's actually an election process that um, elects the exclusive representative and it's pretty fun to go through. It's proctored by the Federal Labor Relations Authority. So a federal element actually helps us do these types of elections in, in this process. I'll give you a minute to read this and I'll digress a little bit uh, before we get into management rights. As you can see, this part of the United States Code, which is federal law, provides that the union may be given the opportunity to be represented at any formal discussion. In a formal discussion, there's about eight different criteria, but the two major ones are, is it mandatory that the employees attend, and is there a published agenda um, for the meeting? So typically, if those two things are, or criteria are present, then the union has a right to be at that meeting. And it generally has to do with conditions of employment or working conditions. They also have a right to be um, present during any examination of, of an employee. And an examination is an investigation, an interview, questioning, that type of thing. Um, and if it's in the employee's best interest or the employee reason reasonably believes that there will be some sort of disciplinary or adverse action, then the employee, and it's on the employee, to request that the union is present. So um, if, if you ever think that you're going to be questioned or that anything that, that happened or that you're doing may end up uh, coming into question and that you may be disciplined for it, then you have a right to request a representative, a union representative, be present. I'll give you a second to read management rights. Again, just know that this is a very paraphrased and con condensed version. If you're interested, please do an internet search on 5 U.S.C. 7106. Management has the right to determine the mission, how we're going to organize to support that mission or complete that mission, fund it, number of employees that we'll use to uh, be successful in that mission, and then any internal security practices. We do that by hiring, assigning, directing employees, um, we can lay off employees or furlough employees. It has happened in the past. Um, and we also have the right to take adverse or disciplinary action for unwanted behavior or um, less than successful performance in some cases. We do assign work and we also take whatever actions necessary to carry out the mission in case of emergency. This type of emergency would be um, something that you'd call out the National Guard for, so a fire, a flood, something like that. Those are non-negotiable rights. This last paragraph um, are permissive rights, which means that we may negotiate them if management decides we want to. So the number and types and grades of employees, positions that go to a certain work element or subdivision, projects, tours of duty, and then the final catch-all is technology methods or means. And that completes this block of instruction. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns, please email us. We, we prefer email. Um, the distribution email link is on the front of this course, along with our telephone number. You can call us, too, at any time. 
Um, we do not represent employees. We do represent the agency. However, we can and will help employees uh, work through any process or help them understand the meaning of any part of the federal regulation or federal law. Quick review. Are you eligible to belong to a bargaining unit? And the answer is maybe. If you are eligible to belong to a union, there will be four numbers in block 37 of your SF50. If the four numbers are 8888, eight, 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 you are not eligible to belong to the union. If it's any other four numbers in there, it translates back to a bargaining unit status code and the actual um, union that represents those employees. Your POC or point of contact information, we reviewed that in three or four slides. Um, it has the actual representative's name, the email address, telephone number, and then a link to uh, the union contract that uh, was published for the, those bargaining units. And then finally, uh, your rights as an employee supervisor management and union were reviewed. Again, if you have any questions, comments, please email or call us. Thank you.